Noise sensitivity seems to be a consistent problem that lingers even when other symptoms are improving. Do we have any suggestions for that? First of all, I would get uh, a hearing test just to make sure that there isn't something else going on. Make sure that the hearing is um, is, is fine. Uh, that's usually my go-to point to try and see is there hyperacusis or is this something that may be just more kind of psychologically guided? And I think there's a that's the big issue with a lot of concussion symptoms as is that it's so subjective, right? You might be sensitive to noise, however, um, it may not actually be considered a noise sensitivity. So I would I would get checked on that just to try and see. Uh, in terms of treatment for noise sensitivity. Um, there isn't really much of a protocol that can be followed, but like anything with concussion on the rehab side of things, it's find out you know what's bothering you and try to work yourself up to that. The analogy that I always provide is think about this like a marathon, right? If you wanted, like let's say the marathon of noise sensitivity is going to like a rock concert, right? You're gonna go see Metallica rock out and that that's what you want to be able to do that's your marathon and you want to be able to handle that now if you're noise sensitive at least perceiving that you're noise sensitive you're not going to go and do that tomorrow but by adding a little bit and a little bit and exposing yourself to first let's say ambient noise or you know in increasing the volume of the television slightly over time or slowly exposing yourself more and more to more you know more areas that would have greater noise and then you know eventually maybe riding the subway would be you know getting up there you know in, in decibel levels and doing things that you know, obviously don't put yourself at risk of you know damage to your ears but putting yourself in, in situations where you're increasing the exposure of that that's typically how concussion rehab goes and so back to my marathon example let's say getting back to full work is your marathon well you're gonna start with maybe an hour a day then you're going to gradually build to two hours and three hours and four hours and five hours and six hours and eventually you're back to full work. And it's the same thing. If I'm going to go out and try to run a marathon tomorrow, I'm going to die. I'm not in good enough shape to be able to run a marathon. But if I started tomorrow with a 3K and then I jumped up to a 5K and then I gradually built myself up and got myself in enough shape to be able to run a marathon, I could do it. Right? I know I could. And that's kind of the issue with any type of symptom that you're currently having. If you feel dizzy, if you have noise sensitivity, if you have light sensitivity, it's gradually exposing yourself to the stimulus to a greater and greater degree until regular noise doesn't bother you anymore. So a lot of people will avoid things. Like I've seen people with noise canceling headphones. Well, people that wear noise canceling headphones probably have a higher likelihood of actually experiencing noise sensitivity in the future is because you've, you've decreased the amount of noise that you're exposing yourself to and now regular conversation seems too loud for you. And it's the same thing, they've done studies on this with light sensitivity. People that are light sensitive had a, had a greater likelihood of wearing sunglasses and exposing themselves to darkness early on in their recovery phase. So the old thing we used to do is say, get rid of any exposure to what I like go and sit in a dark room and you know don't watch any TV and just kind of be on your own and be in this cocoon cave during your recovery. And then people come out and guess what? They can't, they, they're too light sensitive in regular light. Well, because they've been sitting in darkness for two and a half weeks. And this, I think the same thing goes for noise sensitivity is that if you're, if you're shutting it down, you're noise canceling headphones, you're going to have a harder time getting back into just regular life and things that wouldn't have made you sensitive in the past are now making you sensitive. There is some evidence, however, on the other end of things when you look at why people have sensitivity to certain sensations and some studies have found there's a hyperactivation of the thalamus, which is the sensory integration point um, for a lot of a lot of your sensation. And so people with light sensitivity and noise sensitivity tend to have overactivation of these sensory systems in the thalamus. And so there could actually be some sort of central process as a reason for why you are experiencing this noise sensitivity. So basically to kind of sum it all up full circle is we don't really know a lot about it. I think the first step would be to rule anything out. So maybe get your hearing checked, um, maybe check for um, some other things like, you know, acoustic neuromas and things like that that may be causing some, some problems for you. Once that's been ruled out, then I think the progression would be to gradually increase your exposure bit by bit by bit and see if that helps. But then again, we don't really know a lot about it, and so we're back to square one. So try it out.